Voting is underway in Texas's first primary election since the legislature approved a controversial new voting law. The measure, called SB1, places new restrictions on mail-in voting. It prevents county officials from sending mail-in ballot applications to voters who didn't ask for them. The law also stops drive through and 24-hour voting. Jack Fink is with me now. He is a reporter for our Dallas-Fort Worth station, KTVT. So, Jack, how is this new voting law impacting the number of ballots getting rejected? Well, nice to be with you, Elaine. And more mail-in ballots are being rejected this time than they have been in the past statewide, and that's because they don't comply with the new state law. One of the hang-ups is that people are asked to put on their Texas driver's license and or, excuse me, or the last four digits of their Social Security number. And so people are putting down one or the other, but it doesn't match what they initially put down uh, when they registered to vote, so they're getting kicked back. So what we've been suggesting as a news organization is that people put both the driver's license and the last four digits of their Social Security number. The good news is people have until March 7th to make the corrections either online or in person. Interesting. Well, Texas recently redrew its political maps. How did that process play out? Well, like a lot of other states, uh, this is now in the courts. But because our primary is so early today, uh, the courts have allowed the, these current maps to stay in effect. Um, for the most part, uh, the maps have helped uh, most of the incumbents. Well, let's talk about Texas's attorney general race. Is this normally a competitive contest? No, it, it certainly hasn't been. But this time, uh, two-term incumbent Ken Paxton has faced a very serious challenge from three primary challengers. Uh, George P. Bush, the Texas Land Commissioner, uh, very conservative East Texas Congressman Louis Gohmert, and former Texas Supreme Court Justice Eva Guzman. They've all raised a lot of money. They all have statewide name recognition, and they've all gone after him in a big way as far as his ethics are concerned. Now, he does have the support of former President Donald Trump, and so he has had a lead in the polls, but analysts I've spoken to believe that he is going to be forced into a runoff, which is a big story. Hmm. All right. Well, now to the 28th Congressional District. Nine-term U.S. Representative Henry Cuellar, who is under FBI investigation, faces a challenge from attorney Jessica Cisneros. How is that race play playing out? Well, this is in South Texas, and this is a redo from 2020. It was very close, but Cisneros is getting a lot of help this time around from Senator Bernie Sanders, Senator Elizabeth Warren, Congresswoman Alexia, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, and so that is helping her. The district has been redrawn slightly, and so that may help her as well. She's been able to raise a lot of money, and the fact that Congressman Cuellar is under FBI investigation, and so uh, that can't help him at all. All right. Well, former Congressman Beto O'Rourke, who lost a bid to unseat Senator Ted Cruz and had a failed presidential run, is trying to unseat Republican Governor Greg Abbott. Jack, what does the political terrain look like for him now in Texas, and what can we expect his future political moves to look like? Well, he's going to win tonight very easily because no one else uh, in the Democratic Party has the name, uh, name recognition that he has statewide. As far as going forward, he'll likely face Republican Governor Greg Abbott, and this is going to be an uphill climb. Uh, for him in 2022, because this is not like when he ran in U.S. Senate uh, tw in 2018. This is a very different year, obviously. So there's that that is uh, facing that he is facing. The other problem for him is his past statements and positions that he took in the presidential race, as far as seizing people's uh, semi-automatic weapons. Uh, that is not popular here in Texas. And so he's going to face those kinds of issues, but he still raises a lot of money. He still draws a very big crowd. So uh, it'll be interesting to see the kind of race he is able to pull off. Finally, Jack, I want to get your take on former President Trump's influence on this election. You talked about that attorney general contest. How else do you see uh, the former president's influence sort of playing out overall? Well, he has a very sizable uh, influence here in the state of Texas, and he has made a number of endorsements, not only for governor, Greg Abbott, lieutenant governor in the AG's race, 
but also down the ballot. He has even gone as far down as a Tarrant County judge. The Tarrant County judge is the chief county commissioner, if you will, and that surrounds Fort Worth. So this is still a very Republican area. It's going to be interesting to see how that unfolds. He has not endorsed one Republican member of Congress up in the northern suburbs of Dallas, and we're waiting to see the kind of impact that that is having. That member of Congress is having to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars in TV ads in the Dallas-Fort Worth market to defend his record. Hmm, a lot to watch, Jack Fink. Jack, thank you very much.